Since 2012, I've been a member of an informal bi-state working group that is laying the foundation to employ coastal marine spatial planning in Long Island Sound. And given the nature of Long Island Sound, we knew from the start that we would need to be able to pull in all of the agencies and organizations that had a stake in the sound and help them develop a meaningful working relationship on this topic. Um, Long Island Sound is a shared water body. It's jointly and independently managed by the states of Connecticut and New York. It also geographically falls under two regional planning bodies, and it's an estuary of national significance under the EPA National Estuary Program. And what that all means is that most of the agencies and organizations that have an interest in the sound already have a strong working relationship on other issues, such as water quality, habitat protection, dredge spoil material disposal, fisheries management, and things like that. So it wasn't terribly difficult to identify and pull in the key players to start to focus on a new topic of coastal marine spatial planning. What has been a little bit interesting and has slowed the process of moving to the implementation phase has been working together to determine whether or not each state has the authority to do so, to implement and enforce CMSP. Uh, in Connecticut, this clarification was, was made this year. Uh, there was legislation that was passed last year in the Connecticut General Assembly, which then was passed this year, finally, which gave the authority to the Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental environmental protection, sorry, um, gave them the authority to undertake CMSP planning in, in Long Island Sound. And so that is sort of half the hurdle there. It's still unclear whether New York can do the same. So we're continuing forward. Um, we now have a deadline for Connecticut side, uh, 20, 2019. A committee is being established, which will include some of the working group members. And to the extent possible, it's going to involve New York to develop the strategy looking at how we're going to guide our future uses of our sound, uh, the sound waters and the submerged lands. The legislation, because it's a little unequal still, does make it a little difficult as we move forward. We're looking at things about how do we continue this work with all of the agencies involved on both sides of the sound, advancing it on a bi-state manner even while we have to deal with the political uh, process in each of the states. From the state's perspective, one of the drivers in our area, because we don't have uh, the possibility of, say, wind farms, is, is moving energy from uh, Canada and New England to New York. And a lot of that is through pipelines and cables uh, that, that run across the bottom of the sound. So there are a lot of interest groups, uh, residents, people that utilize the sound that have watched the state struggle uh, proposal by proposal to determine whether or not it makes sense to site something in a, a particular location. And so they have an interest in seeing perhaps a way to thoughtfully and comprehensively look at cumulative impacts and, and maybe designate areas that make more sense for this sort of um, uh, placement of these important cables. Uh, so it's, it makes sense to bring everybody's perspective to the table and make sure that everybody's voice is heard and then you can make thoughtful decisions going forward. So by seeking to build these working relationships and building that trust and, and, and holding those discussions with agencies, organizations, and, and any stakeholder that needs to be uh, involved in these decisions, I think we can only see that, that it could lead to greater success.